What's going on, everybody? My name is Justin Gatsu for Pro Football Exclusive here with a very special guest of the LA Kiss of the Arena Football League, Kenny Spencer. Also, I'm here with my co host, Tim Kelly of Section 215. Kenny, what's going on, man? How you doing, bud? I'm doing great. I'm very glad to have this interview with you for Pro Football Exclusive. It's a very much of a great honor to have you on. Oh, no problem. I'm glad you called me and we can get this set up. All right, so first things first, you know, the Arena Football League is now over. The, the, the regular season is now over. The Arena Bowl is coming up. You know, how are things going for you today? Well, you mean like, in, like what are we doing in the off season? Yeah, as in general, you know, anything personal-wise going on for you? Well, right, right now I'm just, you know, uh, right when the season's over, I'm still kicking because obviously my ultimate goal is, I mean, I love the AFL, not my ultimate goal is actually to try to get in the NFL. So I'm staying in the area of L.A. area, and I every Wednesday and Sunday I drive down to uh, Solana Beach close to San Diego, and I work with Michael Houston and Darren Bennett. They're all, uh, they're both retired NFL kickers. So they, I work with them um, all the time, and, you know, just to keep my leg ready for, you know, a phone call, you you know, if someone goes down or a workout or whatnot. So I'm just training, you know, you know, you gotta be prepared at any time. All right, man. I just got done watching Fourth and Loud. That is the LA Kiss documentary on AMC. I love the first episode. Now you have to tell us. Give us a quick spoiler if you're allowed to. Will we be seeing you at some point in the series? Uh, I can tell you that. Yeah. No. I'm. Uh, yeah. There, there's. There's a lot of. Uh, they, they view a lot of guys, but uh, I'm one of the five main focus characters of the thing. So I'll have a bit in the show, but I'm gonna come on a little. I'll come in the second episode, and I think the third more. I'll come in a little bit more, but. Uh, you know, so I mean, it, it, it was fun. It was a good experience and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm, I'm in the show a little bit. All right, now going off that, heading in a, a little bit different direction. Let's go back to after your high school career, where things really are start, started. You played in Northern Alabama. Just give us a bit of insight about your college football career and where it's led you. There again, I couldn't hear you that well, bud. Can you just give us a little bit of insight about your college career and uh, some of the best moments? Okay, well, you know, college, uh, I played two years at a junior college, and I had uh, I had a field goal there. Like, my best field goal there was, like, just like a 37-yard game winner that I had there. And from junior college, I went to North Alabama, and I played two years there. Actually, my first year was 07. They pulled my red shirt uh, because the guy that was going to be kicking off couldn't get the ball in the end zone, so they pulled my red shirt. And then at 08, I thought my, that was going to be my final season. And then uh, uh, they brought in a transfer from Cal. His name was Tom Snyder. Uh, he got injured, and he ended up transferring there. So him and I were battling for the job. And then just so happened that uh, I, I guess I took a class that put me, it put me under hours. So I, I took a class that was an elective, and it wasn't towards my major. So it put me under hours by, like, one credit. So he was able to kick, and I trained that year. And then I ended up finishing up my season in 2009 where that led me to, uh, I had to finish graduating school and stuff like that. I had to work out with the Texans, or the, with the Titans and then the Falcons, and then nothing really came about and stuff like that. And I played in a small arena league called the, uh, it was called the SINFL, and I played for a team called the Alabama Hammers, and then that's what led me and got me my uh, stardom, I guess you could say, into the arena league, and that's when I started with the Spokane Shock the following year. So out of all the impressive moments that you did have in your college career, what would be the one moment that you would point out as your singular favorite moment? Uh, I mean, to be honest, like, I'd say the one in junior college was my sophomore year. It came down to, like, I think it was like 32 seconds left in the game, and we just, they, we just scored a touchdown. And then they then we kicked off, and they ended up running a kickback for a touchdown, and it put us to put them put them up by two. So then I had to come in. We had to run the ball down their throat, and then we threw a long pass, and I ended up kicking a field goal to win the game. I'd say that one was pretty nice. All right, in 2012, you signed with the Spokane Shock of the a of the Arena Football League. You know what was that process like from you? You know, like you said, you have you play like uh, a smaller version of the Arena Football League. Now you're getting up to the big stage of the Arena Football. Now you're a part of the AFL. What was that process like for you signing with the Spokane Shock? It was it was a cool process. Uh, I mean, I had a little help get in there because uh, there was a kicker that was already there. His name was Taylor Rowan. And he was wanting to switch teams. Now, I've already talked to the GM at the time. His name was Ryan McMaid. And, and he 
spoke to me, but it wasn't too serious because I think they were looking at somebody else. But Taylor gave him the, you know, you should go with this guy. He, he's really good. You know, he'll do well for the team. So Taylor told him, and then he gave me the shot because he left the team, and then I was able to go in there, and then I proved to him during camp and stuff like that that I could be the kicker. And then at the end of the year, I ended up, that was, right now, I'd say that was one of my rookie year would be my best year because that's the year I got kicker of the year. But yeah, that, it was a good process of trying to get on the team and stuff. We're talking to Kenny Spencer of the LA Kiss. Now, Kenny, in 2013, you were assigned to the New Orleans Voodoo, but split time between New Orleans and Spokane. As an arena player, was it hard playing for two teams in the span of one season? Uh, now, what, now, playing those two teams, it wasn't a bad thing. Uh, I was with Spokane, and then I got a workout from the Patriots, and I... Uh, back, I don't know if that mixed up with the team and what Spokane wanted to do, but they ended up releasing me, and then they actually signed Taylor back. And then when I came back, they put me on league suspension for, for two weeks, and I was just wondering what the heck they were doing. And why wouldn't they just sign me back? I just got you kicker of the year, and I'm not being able to be signed back with your team. So, I mean, they ended up sticking with him, and so I was out of a job for three weeks. So, they're, you know, you have paychecks coming in, and then for, like, I'd say three or four weeks, you don't have nothing, you know. If it wasn't for my girlfriend at the time, I, I, you know, she kept us afloat, you know. I mean, you guys know as well as I do, we don't get paid millions and millions of dollars like the NFL. So, yeah. you can cut during the season, that's, you know, that's financially our money to keep us stable. So, I, you know, I was able to get picked up by New Orleans, and then I went down there for the last five weeks of the game or five weeks of the season, and uh, you know, I, was, I was glad that Pat O'Hara gave me that chance to come down there and play for him. All right, so it's 2014 currently. Now, you saw yourself playing for the LA Kiss last year. Now, for people who do not know much about the LA Kiss, it was a part of an expansion team for this year's college, fo or college football, arena football season. It was It's actually owned by the Kiss the Rock Band, you know, Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. You know, how big how big of an honor is it to be, uh, you know, playing on a team that's owned by uh, a huge, huge rock and roll um, band in, 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 in the United States and in general? Well, obviously, at first, we, we knew who KISS were. You know a few songs that they sing, and, 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 and you know just, like, the basic songs that they sing. And I guess a lot of guys on the team, we didn't really know how great of an opportunity was to people that actually do love KISS and grew up with KISS. But as we were playing the season, and they were way more involved into the... Uh, organization than we would have ever thought. Like, they were at practices, they were at games, they came to dinners, they took us to dinner, you know. They were they were some owners that, uh, of this high status that everybody puts them on this pedestal, which they deserve because they're these rock legends in the Hall of Fame of rock, and they are right there with us. Now, I can call them personally friends now, you know. Uh, I mean, it was awesome. It was an awesome experience, you know. You know, obviously, being on the TV show, we got to see a lot more of them than the normal than the other guys on the team and stuff like that. But uh, you know, Gene and Gene and Paul, they're they're great. They're, right now, they're the better owners that I've had. Yeah, that certainly sounds like a, a tremendous experience. 2014 was a hard season for the LA Kiss. As you guys transition, or 2013, I should say, as you transition to 2014, what are you and the team looking to focus on? building on and improving on for next season? Well, you know, I mean, obviously everybody knows it wasn't the best season going 3-15, and 15, but, I mean, if you look at a couple games, and, you know, I'd say a majority of our games, we were in it for a while before, you know, it just takes off. You know how arena is when you start doing onside kicks and stuff, the game get blown out of proportion, but... Uh, you know, I mean, guys, just we just need we just need to keep the same core group of guys. You know, there's some certain positions we could maybe switch up and stuff like that. But during the season, we were switching up stuff a little too much. That that's personally my opinion. We weren't sticking with a core group of guys because we needed to make a foundation before we started releasing players and stuff like that. But that's what I just had problems with. Is we should have just kept the team and rode with that team. And if the season would have still came out, we still had that chemistry that we could have carried on in 2015 season. Now, as a veteran of the Arena Football League, as a kicker, what kind of advice would you give to you know up and coming kickers, you know, wanting to play in the Arena Football League? Um, you know, is there any advice that you can give them? Well, I mean, uh, I know, I mean, it, I mean, it's just another league. It's totally, it's a little bit different from the outdoor league, especially with the kicking aspect of it. I mean, there's onside kicks out of nowhere. You got the nets you kick the ball off of. And then, you know, the big factor with the uprights being nine feet wide and then, man, they're, 50, they're 15 feet tall. Other than the NFL or regular college uprights are 18, nine, and only 10 feet tall. I mean, 
Uh, you can purchase, they have these things called splitters you can purchase and you just hook them onto the back of the uprights and you can move them in to any location that you need so you can make an a, a AFL upright if you're trying to get in the league to maybe practice on and, you know, get ready for it. But, I mean, you know, you just kind of I, – I, arena, arena guys and kickers, I think you kind of just fall into the league. You know, people say, hey, we'll try this, and then you try it, and then you just end up liking the game because it's so fast-paced. It's, you know, if you could score, you know, a matter of seconds. Like, at one time in Spokane, we scored, like, 21 points in, I'd say, less than a minute because I hit a bar ball. We hit a touchdown. We, we, well, we hit the, scored a touchdown, hit a bar ball, kicked the PAT, hit another bar ball, and then you got 21 points in less than a minute. So, I mean, the game's fast. It's exciting. So I mean I, I mean I wouldn't put it past anybody to try it. I mean it's awesome. I love it. I love the Arena Football League too. I'm a huge fan of the LA Kiss. This is Kenny Spencer of the LA Kiss, ladies and gentlemen. Kenny, you are on Twitter. Where can we find you on Twitter, man? You can find me at Let It Ride nineteen. All right, I got a, I got my final question for you. And in the first episode of First and Loud or Fourth and Loud, you walked around the house of Gene Simmons. Tell me, what's it like, you know, being inside the house of Gene Simmons? Oh, uh, well, I mean, Gene's house is beautiful. It's just, it looks like this, it's like an old school looking cottage house, but on a freaking massive sized form, obviously. It's dope. It's just, it's just awesome. He has these libraries, this library, there's little libraries at the bottom of his house with glass windows up into the roof, or up into the roof where that see out to his backyard with water slides and all this stuff. I mean, the guy's awesome. He's a good guy. I mean, you know, and then he took us to his memorabilia room, and that's a sight to see in a dog. It's, just massive, like I, 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 it's uh, the memorabilia room could be almost as big as some people's houses in alone. And he's got every piece of memorabilia that you know Kiss has owned or, or you know made for the company or of Kiss or whatever you know, be from 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 Kiss uh, shit, from Kiss condoms to Kiss whatever you know, Kiss jackets. You know, it doesn't matter what it is, they have it. Or uh, maybe we can start adding in a couple of Arena Bull titles to go along in that memorabilia room. Oh, I wish. I could hope so, man. All right, man. Thank you so much for coming on. This is Kenny Spencer of the L.A. Kiss. Now, Kenny, is there anything you'd like to tell the fans that we have not covered? Oh, no. I mean, that's all. I mean, you know, just keep coming to the games. Have faith in the team because the championship will come. Absolutely. Kenny, thank you so much for coming on, man. I appreciate it, Justin. You have a good night. Bye-bye.